Hello and welcome to day two, part one in modular in a week, where I'm building a modular in a week. Day two, that means a new module. So today we are talking about VCAs, voltage controlled amplifiers. And while looking on the internet, finding simple to build VCAs is difficult. They are mostly quite uh, advanced to build and uh, but one of the really simple ones that you can find is the Vectrol and as I said in the last episode uh, a Vectrol is also can also be used to, to uh, as a potentiometer to change CV signals in, in for example a, a VCO so the one of the two ways that you can use a vectral is here I have a one of the slow oscillators in the oscillator bank connected to CV in uh, where there's a vectral in uh, in the reverse avalanche VCO. So here it it changes the pitch of the of the oscillator. The second way is to just connect it in the audio path. Uh, I'll show you in a bit how that is done. And then it actually becomes a, a VCA. So if we connect this, the reverse avalanche VCO into the vectoral VCA, and we take an even slower uh, oscillator to control the CV of the Vectral. And then you get, it opens and closes the throughput of the audio signal. And you can make it softer or harder. And yes, I've turned this one the wrong way. So put on your cooking apron, it's time to bake some Vectrols. A Vectrol is as I showed you in the last episode, so this is the schematics of the uh, simple reverse avalanche VCO. And here this dotted line is the Vectrol. And in theory it is a, an LED that shines on an LDR light dependent resistor uh, contained in a black box or a box that doesn't let any light in or out. And LDR is, as, it sa as I said, light dependent resistor. So in the case of the uh, reverse avalanche VCO we want to change the frequency so instead of having a potentiometer we have the LDR connected in series with the, uh, sorry, in parallel with the potentiometer. And as we put CV voltage in here, we light up this LED which shines on the LDR which lets the signal through over here. First off, let me see, there are commercial variants. Uh, so here's an NSL32SR2 optocoupler LDR plus LED. So even the mass produced variants are an LDR and an LED it's just it's finished in a package. They are have a, however quite expensive so this is 39 Swedish krona so around four dollars for one of these. And an LDR and an LED but separately is much cheaper than that. And here you see a typical LDR so it's a small dish with a squiggly line there and two pins and this is the light dependent resistor and they're usually quite high values so the ones I have is around one mega ohm and adding them in a configuration like this so an LED that shines on the LDR is the actual vectoral 
you need a, a resistor here to not burn this LED out. And in some of the cases I did, I added an another LED for show in series with this one. So everything missing from this, from making the part Vectral, is a black box that takes all the light out of the equation. And connecting this would be, for example, if you want it as a VCA, then you would have a jack over here with audio input which would go to the one pin and then you would have audio output. So the VCA part would be between here and then over here you would have a jack C, V, N, a resistor and then ground. So this is the VCA configuration of this circuit where the Depending on how much CV you put in, you raise the or, or lower the resistance over these two pins and letting the audio through. Now, if we instead want to do a VCO uh, frequency mod, for example, so there will be the circuitry somewhere, and then you will have a potentiometer coming out something like this usually it looks like this so here's the potentiometer and the middle leg is usually connected to one of the legs and you connect these two pins over the pins of the potentiometer so parallel with the potentiometer and again you have sister CV input and ground and here you could also of course have a potentiometer to to have the CV amount which you also will see in some of my in the reverse avalanche VCO so CV comes in lights this up and this one changes the resistance over these two pins and adds to the resistance already here or removes resistance from this one uh, so they work in in unison with each other but when this one is zero this one can't uh, give any more voltage over these two pins because this one is already zero and all the ele uh, voltage electricity will go over the potentiometer. So these are the two simplest ways to use vectrals and useful ways. But wait, you ask, where do I connect the plus, minus and ground connections? And that is nowhere in this module no matter how you use it as a VCO frequency modulator or a VCA this is a so-called passive module it just uses the voltage that comes on the CV in to drive the the LED which then just this one is passive it gets light and it changes the resistance so there's no voltage, uh, driving voltage into this, only CV. And this brings us to the containers. I tried quite a few ways to create the container. I started with uh, electrical tape which is black and didn't work at all. I then moved on to trying hot glue because I had bought some black hot glue and I actually have some of these working but in the end it was just a hot mess in the literal use of the words. It was hot and it was messy and I think the glue got in the way of the LED and the LDR so I'm not sure how, how well these vectrals work.
So in the end I got out my Fimo clay or Cernite clay and that worked really well so I, I made a small dish and then rolled the L LED and LDR into them and then I baked them in the oven and that worked really great and uh, that is they're very it doesn't seem that any light gets in and they work a treat so that is and Fimo clay is really cheap to find uh, and I would really recommend this method if you want to make a few uh, vectrols on your own And we end up with these small little modules, very nice. And you have one side with a long and a short leg, so this is the LED side. And this where both legs are the same is the LDR side. And with, it's just a resistor, it doesn't matter which way you put it. The LED is a bit more important. Same, this is the... Uh, hot glue variant, so not as tidy as the other one, but same principle. And then I did a lot of sketches on how to put this on Vero board. So, and if we look at this one, full of electrical tape. So, if we look at this one, so this is one of the early. Um, hot glue variants and that's why I have the electrical tape as well because there is a lot a bit of uh, light coming in through the holes here so I have this connected to a Vero board like this and just having strips from the uh, potentiometer down here and I have two so along with the LED inside the Vectrol uh, there's also a red LED in series and a 330 ohm resistor in this case. And this is a VCA hookup, so you have input, output and CV input. And it's just the schematics I showed earlier. Here we have it in the VCO. So here we have it as a CV controlling uh, re uh, potentiometer, sort of. So here also we have one of the, those uh, Fimo clay vectrols. And they are connected here, those two yellow ones here, connected in parallel with the, with the rate knob up here. It's a bit difficult to see, but yeah. And this other, so this this uh, Vectral VCA also has the hot glue variant. I did three hot glue and three of uh, the really nice female clay ones. Same he same thing here. And I, I on the second reverse avalanche, I removed the the CV amount red LED, so the indicator LED, so there's just the LED inside the Vectrol in the second one. Uh, but on the Vectrol VCA, I really find it helpful and nice to have an LED, so I keep that in both my Vectrol VCAs. This is also an improvement. All my first modules were very wide. So this is 6 HP, 
5 HP and then I'm down to 4 HP uh, and I hope that is enough. That was before I knew how many modules I would be making uh, and how much space they take when you leave a lot of uh, room for the fingers but they take a lot of space in the rack. And this is basically it for the Vectral VCAs and Vectral as a CV uh, adjuster for uh, res, uh, resistance values. Uh, we have two more uh, modules I want to show today um, before we move on to the next one and I think I show this so to be able to listen to two sounds at once I have one of these just hooked into my computer speakers uh, but on day three we are going to make boring modules as multiples and buffers and mixers and stuff like that but hopefully this will get you psyched even for those boring modules that at this very moment we are starting to need them to listen to two sounds. Now we have in this patch we've done right here this one we have two uh, sound paths uh, one from the uh, 4046 simple VCO into one vectoral VCA and one from the reverse avalanche uh, VCO into the other uh, VCA. So we have two paths and that's this is part of the modular experience that you divide and you you add or subtract and add together different signals and do uh, different sound paths which in the end become a really complex sound. So uh, two more modules and I'll see you in the next episode after you click the like button, the subscribe button and the bell button and see you. Bye.